In a previous video, I mentioned the Great Prairie of the West zone that was coming to the game in a future update, and recently we just got a few more details on this alongside the March update. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the March update is going to be the first update of 2022, and in this we get a few answers about the upcoming zone as well, which isn't going to be coming out until summer, so it's not going to be in the March update but there are details on this that we will go over. As for the March update itself, we do have a few changes. We actually have a new grade of cloak that is going to be coming in. So there's going to be five new brilliant Aeronaut cloaks, and there's also going to be some new growth items or growth materials that come in alongside this update. They don't say what, but this is probably the biggest thing that's coming in. The rest is more so little things and little bits of convenience. We do have Sun Gold and Zelok changing, so whenever there's world bosses or raid monsters spawning, the zone will turn into a conflict slash war zone, so that's going to make it a little more interesting. Other than that, we just have some quality of life stuff that's coming in, so friends now, you actually have to accept them, so people can't just add you and see if you're online. I'm not sure if too many people care that much about this. I don't know, it, do it doesn't particularly bother me, but I guess people can always keep an eye on whether you're online or not. It doesn't really bother me, but I'm sure some people might care about this. It's uh, interesting that this is coming now. So you can see on the left here, you can see friend requests. And then on the right, you can see pending friend requests. I assume that's what that is. I don't speak Korean, but I can assume. And then we also have some changes to the block system as well. So you can only block up to 100 players, but you can also auto-decline party invites, private trades, and door requests from them. So if you've got someone in Marianople while you're just trying to stand around just spamming duels on you. You can block them <laughs> and auto decline those duels if you want, I guess. And big here that they also mention is you can now send mail to the other faction once again. So if you've got an alt on the opposite faction that you want to send gold over to or go back and forth between, then you can now do that which is nice because I do have a few thousand gold on my uh, my Haranian alt. It does say, however, the above update, the target of interest list, the friends list. For some, I feel like this has just been thrown through Google Translates, which is fair enough because that's what I do with most of the Korean stuff, so I can't blame them. But uh, it, it does say your friends list is going to be reset as well upon this and the block list as well, I guess, which is to be expected. But... You know, just a few convenience changes here. Not in major. The mail change is probably the biggest thing because people wanted it to go back to that, I assume. And then they mentioned they're adding new arch paper and tutorial quests related to commerce and a new dungeon called Miss Song Summit. I don't know what this means, unless you can just, like, instance in there now. That must be what that is. I don't know. Unless this is really poorly translated. Yeah, this is a bit of a weird one. They also mentioned, moreover, they plan to make updates to the guide rest area in Mirage Isle, so please direct any new players there. So they do have, for those that don't know, in Mirage Isle where the instruments used to be, in the building, in the middle, there's a few quests there you can pick up. But yeah, that is it for the preview of the March update. That's all that's really coming in. It's not a major up. I mean, the cloaks are probably the biggest thing in there, so that is something to look out for. So the Great Prairie of the West update has been confirmed to be updated in summer this year, so who knows when that'll be, June, July, Somewhere around there, we'll see. But the Great Prairie of the West is an area where the Frank call their eternal lands. This piece of land with the mighty Plains Eye Mountain rising high is a place the nomad Ferran consider their homeland. According to Ferran's storylines story or storytellers, the mountain is where the Sun Father gave them the right to live in the Great Prairie. The Ferran shaman climbed the mountain to form worship ceremonies. So you get some Ferran law. There you go, I guess. And then we get some nice images of the zone here. An image of the solar altar up here. So it, it's going to be an interesting zone. My concern with the zone is how interesting is it going to be? Are we going to want to be there? My issue with all the new zones that they bring in is they don't really have a lot of value. They don't really add much to the game other than just a new plot of land. And, um, well, with the Akash invasion, we got a plot of land and a upgrade system that I don't think anyone really wanted. I don't know. We'll see what this actually has to offer. Right, and here we get an image of some ruins as well. So apparently a big battle took place here. A lot of Feron heroes died, which, you know, I'm West, so that's good. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but apparently these spirits came together and created the Guardian of Celestia, which we're going to get a lot of story quests revolving around, I assume, in this update. And also, there's apparently going to be some sort of faction competition in this zone 
to battle for the Guardian of Celestia, so I don't know if that is fighting the other factions to get a chance to fight the Guardian as a world boss or access it in some other form. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be a world boss. We then get a look at some of these world bosses here that we'll have in this zone. We've got this like storm worm thing. We got this uh, this big storm owl guy, and then and then I think we have the Guardian of Celestia here, which makes me think it is a world boss. So. That's what we'll be getting in the new zone. I do hope we get a bit more in here and it's an actual interesting zone because a lot of the zones end up just being dead and just, you know, running through at certain times. So I don't know. I'd like to see them do more with newer zones, but we will see come the summer updates. Now then, here they mentioned some of the suggestions they've gotten, some questions, and we'll just go through these and see what they've got to say about some of these issues because I do plan on doing a video talking about Kakao Games' progress with the game so far and where the game's really standing. But uh, we will save that for another video. For now, I'll go over what they've got to say here, though. So here they mentioned bottlenecking issues with the main quest. Um, and when I think of this, I think Candle Quest and the one quest in Hell Swamp with, with the alchemy merchant that's like has to craft something when you turn in a quest. And when you do that, no one can accept or turn in a quest until the alchemy merchant's done crafting and they're just like unnecessary bottlenecks which apparently they say that they've changed some some of how the object interactions are done um i've not really seen this because i've not tried leveling through when there's a big group of people but that is good for whenever they do another fresh start or hopefully a seasonal server is what i'd like to see ideally they also mention the cactus item which i believe they ended up giving cactus and other items out for free on the fresh starts. You could just redeem them in the marketplace, if I recall. Um, so I guess that's going to be their solution to the quests like that, or maybe they will have just changed it. But it is good to see them taking notes of issues. Now here they have something that I've been talking about for a while. It's please distinguish the key inputs for riding your own mount and other people's mounts, which I don't know why we changed this. We used to have two hockeys for this, and they just took away one of the hockeys and just put everything on f or g or whatever it is I, I i don't know why i don't know I'll, I'll do it by instinct but i don't know why we removed the other key because it was like g or h to get on the back and it was fine i don't know i guess some people had an issue with it but they've apparently but they're apparently going to add a feature that allows you to ride your own mount only in the march updates and if you turn this feature on you won't be able to see the button for board and mounts that belong to others, so other people's mounts. You can ride mounts that belong to other people by right-clicking on the mount, though. This is fine. Um, I think add this in and then add the other hockey in. Or have an option to, to remove the other hockey if you don't want it there. Just, just an idea. I just think it's, I don't know, it seems like a silly change. And here they then mention, please improve the escape cooldown. Um, so they mentioned you probably experienced falling beneath the ground from time to time while playing the game. This is a chronic issue with the engine used to develop the game. And I do get this from time to time. It's honestly not that common. Um, I got it more so in the garden quite a lot. And it was annoying in the garden, I will say. But um, while this has been improved, it still arises from time to time. The escape feature is used to help you escape from isolated areas. Uh, I don't think this is an issue, honestly. I think the cooldown's fine on the, the escape. I, d I don't fall beneath the ground that often. There's some mention of please increase the co-raids. And they've mentioned they've changed the monster kill prioritization during quests in the January update. And so they've hoped that's improved the experience somewhat. Um, so there's that. Now here they mention the exile system and faction proportion. For this they say, first of all, the faction points per server are calculated based on leadership of the character participating in different competitions. Equipment points, number of participants, and contribution. Faction proportion is based on these faction points. In fact, we understand that it's difficult to meet the faction proportion of servers that already have a significant proportion difference. Although it will be difficult to change this in a short period of time, we will improve the faction proportion following the below direction. They're going to lower the exile system requirements, enabling you to change factions more freely and enhance the small faction buff. Did they lower it to 8k again? Or am I misremembering? I'm sure they lowered it to 8k, which I think is probably fine. They could lower it further if they wanted to. Honestly, it might be good to just lower it. I don't know, because then you could have friends just play with friends whenever they first start. Um, there's definitely some issues that could arise from that, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. However, we will analyze your major concern first, which is the faction sabotage situation of all servers, and then make improvements in order. Okay, so 
it is good to see them actually, you know, taking some of this feedback and taking it into consideration. Then we have some stuff about the faction competitions, uh, the Siege Rep Recipota harming the fun of the game, um, and then please improve the Akash Invasion content. Again, the Akash Invasion content is really dull. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind if they just removed <laughs> the whole Akash Invasion. I couldn't care. Keep the story quest in. The rest I don't really care about. The whole... I, I, just adding more systems on top to progress is a... I don't know. Just an, an annoyance. The whole progression system that came in with the Akash Invasion content was... I don't know. Just didn't feel very rewarding. And I just don't find myself caring enough to go do the Akash Invasion. But yeah, let's see what they've got to say about this. It was inevitable to set a limit on the number of participants to create a pleasant gameplay environment. This has also been limiting players' participation itself. Uh, do as many people actually show up to a cash invasion anymore? I know a few people I've spoke to have just been like, I don't even bother going to it anymore. But who knows? Um, I, I've not went to it in a while ever, just because I don't care. Yeah, we are equally aware of inconveniences caused by the video played whenever you enter the content and the so shortage of quests such as void compasses, arcane spears, etc. We will start making updates on the elements that can be improved first as soon as possible before making an update that aims to aims at structural reorganization. Well, at least they're going to look into improving the Akash Invasion, so we'll see how that goes. Question, please make a penalty for players who cancel dungeon ma matchmaking at the end to buy time. You know what? I'm okay with this. <laughs> it is very annoying when you're just waiting on one person to join. I had this a lot with the, the Squid Game event, or just any arena where you're just waiting to go in and there's like one or two people that don't accept or cancel. I do get that sometimes it does take a while for these things to pop, so that is like the one issue with it sometimes, but it is also really annoying when it pops and then you've got to wait another 10 minutes because someone didn't accept. So they say they've been receiving many reports about this issue, so they'll first of all apply an entrance penalty for actions such as entrance delay, force cancellation, etc. as soon as possible. So they are going to do something about this, which is cool, you know. I don't know if everyone feels the same about that, but it is kind of annoying when you are waiting and you just don't get to go in. And then there's some questions about UI improvements as well, so we may see some stuff like that come in. And then they say they're revising all the opinions on different content improvements, bug fixes, etc. But yeah, they mentioned they're going to do an in-game survey and collect these opinions for the next update plans. And then a little thank you as well. But uh, yeah, that is it for the March update. Um, I thought that was worth going over. I definitely want to talk about Kakao Games' progress so far and where the game stands right now, but I will save that for another video. Um, you can expect that soon, in between me playing Lost Ark. But uh, yeah, all right, so that is it for this video. Thank you for watching, everyone. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. But yeah, let me know what you think of the updates, uh, what you think of Kyle's progress, maybe. And I think I will do a video on that next, so expect to see that sometime soon. But yeah, thank you again to all the Twitch subscribers that help support the channel, and I will see you all in the next video.